Pigeons 420. Mr. Grow It. And Rob from Cannabis Lifestyle TV. From the Stash Podcast. This show is brought to you by Dutch Pro USA. Nutrients made for growers by growers. From the base nutrients to the Explode Booster. Dutch Pro USA is bringing you the essentials that all growers need without the extra bottles. Visit Dutch Pro USA or find their products on Amazon.com. Spider Farmer LED. One of the leaders in affordable quality LED lighting for growers. From the SF Quantum Board Series to the SE Bar Style LEDs. Spider Farmer has you covered without breaking the bank. Find Spider Farmer LEDs on Amazon.com. And AC Infinity. Innovators in the air game. Providing state-of-the-art inline fans, tents, and more to the home grower. Visit acinfinity.com or Amazon to pick up some of their products. And you can save money with any of these brands by checking out the discount codes below in the description. From the Stash Podcast, it's your boy Rob from CLTV, Pigeons, Mr. Grow It, and Shane from My Grow. What up, man? Hey, how you doing? Happy to have you here, dude. Happy to have you here. Been a fan, been watching your content for a long time. Uh, when it comes to making any purchase decisions for LED, literally you're the go-to guy for anybody in the community for me. Send them there. And uh, I'm happy that I always come back with, dude, I saw another video, and actually I'm going to get this light instead. I'm like, what? There you go amazing yeah it's definitely good to have you on board i mean your name comes up quite often when we talk about leds and kind of leading the way in the whole testing side of things you dr mj coco i mean we even put you up there with uh dr bruce bugby um you know dan oh, no. from the oh, green no. sunshine do company you guys <laughs> <laughs> isn't it so weird when people put there like you're like the og the guy and it's like no no chill yeah, yeah. chill what I'm trying to say is you bring a lot of knowledge to this community, and it's, it's very uh, appreciated. And, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's dive in and, and uh, extract some of that knowledge from you. Yeah, let's go. Well, I think for people who uh, maybe aren't hip to you, which I'm surprised you're not, um, Shane, you want to maybe give a little background on uh, kind of what got you into this industry and what brought you even onto YouTube and, and doing this kind of stuff? Yeah, sure. It was, it was about five years ago I quit the rat race. I was working for uh, big corporates as an engineer for years and ended up in management and honestly hated it um i am useless at managing people um uh, i discovered and so i was lucky enough there was a restructuring got a, got a redundancy got a package I had to decide what to do with myself and it was right about that time this is five to six years ago where leds were just coming on the market um I was having, I was, I had always had difficulty myself with growing with HPS because I was growing in a small, low space, which got really hot in the summer. So I wasn't, uh, I wasn't hard to convince that LEDs might, might help my solution. Um, this is all around the same time. And I bought, I spent quite a lot of money importing LEDs direct from China at the time and couldn't get my grows going again. I just couldn't understand it. I was I thought I had enough wattage. I thought I had the right spectrum, all this sort of stuff. It just wasn't working out for me. So at the time, not having a job at the time was a fairly significant expense. I went and spent a few thousand euros on uh, equipment to test what I had and discovered that basically the lights I had were junk. They were rubbish and they weren't doing anything near what um, my HPS would have done. So got onto the forums, got on all the usual stuff that people would have been doing at the time, all the DIY build kits and, you know, spending even more ridiculous amounts of money on uh, importing LEDs, building my own lights, all that stuff. And over that winter, I just decided, you know, you love it, you're getting into it, you're gaining some knowledge here, why not start it as a business? So I had lots of time on my hands and just um, started building lights. And I was building lights for my friends. I was building lights for myself and building lights for my friends. And then uh, just started um, started building them commercially. And uh, yeah, that, that was, as I said, about five years ago, it was cobs back then. So everybody was going with cobs, building with cobs. And uh, so I released my first product about four years ago now, four and a half years ago. And yeah, I've been building the company ever since, um, still selling LED lights and uh, with the YouTube channel, which has been pretty successful and grew, has grown with it. It was a case in the early stages where I was trying to convince people basically to spend a lot of money relatively on LED lights versus what were still very good um, comparatively, you know, HPS was, was, was still very good and HID and CMH was becoming more popular at the time as well. 
and I was trying to think of ways to, to demonstrate this to people about the value of spending more money, basically higher efficiency. And um, I started doing the comparison videos and the how-to videos and the DIY videos and all that stuff on the YouTube channel. And it's just grown from there, really. It's just sort of accumulated organically over time to um, to now. Uh, yeah, it's um, seemed to be one of the the go-to people for uh, a reference point, anyway, for uh, LED grow lights now. So we were kind of transitioning into about switching from the the not switching, but where he was talking about the efficacy of, of switching up to the oh. LEDs and, and where is Contri that? In the environment. and you Yeah, know. contributing the, the huge factor of that. That's that's where a lot of people are saying growers. I read an article recently, I don't know if you guys saw that, talking about allegedly the impact of the grow community on the environment, the negative impact. There's so many people using a massive amount of power. And I don't think so much of it's the home grower, the tent grower, but the larger growers, the caregivers, um, the small commercial facilities, places that are definitely running the HIDs and they're pushing things as, as much as they possibly can in terms of electrical consumption. So I think LED, as it's getting more affordable and it's not so, you know, every light is in a thousand dollars, there's a lot better lights that you're seeing that are more economical. You're going to see more of these companies switch over to it. I recently was at a, a pretty decent sized grow and they were working daisy chains with their uh, HPSs to their LEDs using, uh, not Lux, what was it? What's it? Gavitas. It was Gavitas. So they, 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 they synchronize, which is really nice. So it's not like your obsolete lighting is gone. You can still utilize it in some sense as supplemental. But I think a lot of people are hesitant because of the initial cost. Long-term ROI is a no-brainer. Initial cost, that's tough. Capital isn't everywhere. It's usually investors and people who want that quick ROI. It's hard to show that when it's like, hey, in five years, this is going to pay for itself by far, like maybe even less time. Yeah, the, 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 I think you passed that point for the smaller lights. So the HID is not that cheap in smaller versions, So the and, and they're much less efficient. So the 150-watt HPS, for example, and the 250-watt HPS, and even the 315 CMH, they're probably, probably 75 cents per watt or something like that. So they're... You know, your 150 watt HPS would be about $100 with reflectors and everything else. And you can buy an LED light from Amazon and get it, you know, the next morning, <clears throat> which is uh, the equivalent wattage, so about 100 watts, 120 watts. And you can buy that for $100 now, uh, $120. Um, and you don't have all the, again, all those issues. They're, they're twi over twice as efficient. So, and battling with a 150 watt HPS and a little two by two, it's a real struggle. Um, you know, they're really out of, out of proportion. You get up to the higher, the sort of 600 watts. And again, you're probably, it's not that much more for a HID system. It's probably 120 to $150 for a real basic system. But you can get the equivalent 400 watt HID now for, yeah, about $450, $500. Again, it's expensive, but you're, again, your 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 payback on electricity on home usage is less than two years now. It's about 18 months. Yeah, um, it, it really works, has yeah, pulled, it, pulled it much closer and made the argument much um, much easier on the smaller side lights. You and, took exactly what I was going to say. I, was like, I think that, that the gap between the argument has, has shrunk a lot with yeah. more competition has created more innovation and more innovation has created the consumer usually getting the better end result. And I think yep. what's really cool about that is now the argument is more your ROI overall, but people still have a big argument. And I want to touch on this and get a little real science. Cause I'm the bro science guy, but HPS versus led. Now we're talking wattage here. When you're saying like, I'm going to get this watt versus that watt. A lot of people say wattage is out the window now, but <laughs> is it? No, no, you know, that's no. what I'm thinking too. It's like, does it play into power though? So it's like, well, if I got a thousand water, that's going to well, bang way more than my 600 water. Yeah. So to put it in perspective, the, um, a HPS system, um, delivers about 1.2 micromoles for every watt consumed to the plants. So that efficiency of 1.2, it's a bit like, you know, miles per gallon. It's how much you get out versus how much you're putting in. The a basic LED system now, as in on the lower price range, 
um, you know, straight in China, all that kind of stuff, would be at about two micromoles per watt. Middle middle end would be about 2.2, 2.3. So <clears throat> for the middle value LEDs or mid priced LEDs, you're getting twice the efficiency. So you're having the power input, and that that all that power that you're saving is heat. Mm-hmm. So um, inefficiency basically comes out as heat, and that's whether the light is getting reflected off the reflector or reflected off the walls of your tent. If that reflects and doesn't come back, it gets absorbed and it generates heat. So you can cut your the heat into your grow area by about 60, 65% with a mid-priced LED. And, um, you know, there does, again, there's the arguments about people who need heat in the, sun, in the winter and all that kind of stuff. But again, it's 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 um, if you can dial in your environment properly, as in have a temperature control fan, don't suck the air through like a you know a whirlwind during the winter. You can um, you can grow with a low a relatively low wattage LED and still keep your temps okay in your tent. So the the again and, and back to the the money side of it, um, your your payback on electricity. I've done loads of sort of researching around the place, and I think. The US, it's about average about 17 cent per kilowatt hour for a domestic user. And on that basis, Ballpark. with that mid priced LED, it's, it's 18 months. Next thing then is you don't, um, you don't have um, a lot of heat, radiated heat, far red or infrared, I should say, coming from LEDs. So you don't have that stress on the, on the plant canopy. You don't have the uh, likelihood of bleaching of your buds, all that kind of stuff that can happen with HID. And then the even distribution, which is very hard to get with HID without sort of wasting a lot of energy by, by having your light very high, means that you're going to get a much better um, yield from all your, your plants in all the parts of your grow area. And that means that you're, um, you can water them the same, feed them the same, you can be much more dialed in in terms of uh, getting the best out of each plant in your tent. But overall... Yeah. Yeah, overall, um, you know, other than somebody who just wants to basically cut and run and, you know, just wants to do a couple of grows and get the hell out of there, which there are people that uh, still want to do that, um, especially here where it's not legal still, you know. Yeah, just knock it out and go. So some people just don't want to put the money into it because they don't know if they're going to be here in six months or they're going to, you know, they might have to leave the stuff behind or whatever. But uh, aside from that argument, there's no real... Uh, justification for for HID anymore? No, uh, that's that's it, as a, as it, as a layman, uh, it, that's exactly the argument that I had to fall on to switch from HPS to LED. It was it was I remember you mentioning it was the it's the battling of your environment, and that that's exactly what happened to me. Uh, my HPS, I was running at least two one thousand watts in my area. It was in temperatures were incredible. I then had to implement a 5,000 or 15,000 BTU air conditioner to kind of combat that. That was Jeez. all being pumped outside. Yeah. And then, you know, the, the money, man, I was paying 300 plus dollars a month yeah. just for this operation. Really, it's crazy. So, so to switch to LED, which yes, there was a, there was an original upfront cost. These lights were about 600 excuse me, 600 plus dollars to make that investment. But I paid that off so, so quickly in terms of the, there was no more air conditioner. All I needed to do was run a small heater, a little portable heater with a thermostat on it. The thing runs like four hours a day at most during the night. Right. And the amount of money say, I don't even see my garden on the hydro bill anymore. Yeah. So, or we electricity bill, whatever we, it's referred to everywhere else. But it's like that—that that was the argument I needed. I wasn't ready to make the switch to LED five, six, seven, eight years ago when people were saying, "Let's go, let's go." Or it was a little bit Same longer. Here. And and you know, I, I I just felt no, I don't have the five thousand dollars to go buy a light that may or may not provide. You mentioned it. You know, you, you weren't you weren't even getting a product that was guaranteeing any kind of success back then. And so, uh, as as and a hard usually too, a, exactly blurple. So it's, as as a creator, that that was horrible. And now I know that's 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 a that's kind of outside the argument. But the the, the 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 that moment that I pivoted from 
uh, HPS or, or high intensity to LED was a big moment, but I was hardened on the idea that I wasn't going to switch. I was HPS all the way because these LEDs, come on. Now, nope, no, nope, yeah. nope, I'm not believing it. Don't believe well, it. Dude, I could imagine like Chris in, in Vegas, uh, it would probably be worth switching and spending more initially in comparison to cooling. A place in you know, Nevada is going to be hot as hell. So either you don't grow in the summertime if you're rocking HPSs, or you somehow cool all that, which is going to be extremely hard when you're dealing with 100 plus degree temperature, you know? Yeah, it was a, HPS used to be a benefit back in the day for wintertime. Heat right? in the to house. Kind of heat up that grow space. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like you're right, summertime, once that rolls around, I mean, you're struggling trying to control the heat, and then you're adding in cooling. There, dude. The cost just skyrockets, you know, especially if you have those portable air conditioners mm-hmm. that are yeah. in the room. So it gets crazy. But yeah, back in the day, I mean, it was uh, a lot of junk companies out there, right? I remember Mars Hydro back in like 2014, <laughs> they had this, uh, the, the green one, I forget what the model was on it, but they continued to sell that all the way up until like 2019 or something like this. And I had people talking to me like, Hey, is this a good light? I'm like, no, this was released back in 2014. This is less efficient Absolute. than HID grow lights. You know what I mean? So the, 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 it's, we've evolved so much and there's still so much to learn about lighting um and there's still a lot of confusion upon what you should kind of look for when you buy an led grow light and i would like to kind of get into that next shane what do you think growers should kind of look at when they're looking to buy an led grow light because there is just there's so much information and so many things to look at dude overwhelming marketing is the key (laughs) yeah so i guess um getting getting the right light for your space and your needs um is key so again the information that manufacturers provide is getting a lot better now um so take mars hydro as an example three four years ago they used to publish a power map and their power map was just basically a center point measurement of how much power was in the center and you know and i could get a laser pen you know a five watt laser pen and get that high intensity in the center and it's not the center that you need you'd need the whole um, plant canopy and basically a good power map. Power map is just a diagram showing the intensity, the light intensity in power numbers all the way across its specified grow area. And that'll show you real numbers in terms of what, how much you need. And, and again, it, it, it's, it is complicated. I've got to talk about the units of, of power. It's, it's micromoles per meter squared per second. And I know it's a big mouthful, but if you just take it as being a number, and you want that intensity to be around a range of about 500 to 1,000 average across the grow area. Um, 500 micromoles would be what a, an average of 500 micromoles would be what a 600 watt HPS with a digital ballast would have delivered in a 4x4 or a 1,000 watt HPS would have delivered in a 5x5. We would have got about 500 micromoles and that's a really good solid starting level and um, especially for starter growers just getting into it if you're experienced and you want to push the boundaries and you want to get re- really want to maximize the yield from that space you can go up to about a thousand go beyond that and you're probably into having to supplement with co2 really to get the, the best out of the light intensity so you're looking at a light fixture it should be specified for a particular area you should show power map showing the distribution of light that it delivers over that grow area and you should keep an eye out for the average what's the average micromoles across it and if you can't get the average just have a look at what the lowest and the highest is and you know it'll be somewhere in the middle between that um I'm curious, just quickly, I'm curious if if we have any experience. Are we to, are we to take the manufacturer's word for this? Or are there... I, 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 good question. I would say are mostly... Are there Migros' word? Or are there other... Like I, I, and this is why we appreciate having Migro, Shane. Guys Dude, like you doing this for me. This, and and Chris is another one. He's Chris, got the yeah, par Chris meter. Chris doing it forever, man. And I had no idea what par was until I seen, like, until Chris pulled this up. And I'm sure he pulled in reference from yourself, Shane. I've so seen the ballpark too. I, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm curious. I, I know that there's been not scandals, but say some, some, Wolf some blurring sold. of the lines when it comes to the micromoles. You know that two point and that two point two. That that 
that make or break, if you will. Now, I, I say this with a, a giant asterisk because I'm outside of my ballpark on this. But my original yeah. question is, can you take the, the manufacturer for his word or, or the, sorry, their word? Or is there another source? I think there probably are some manufacturers who are <clears throat> not in the, <clears throat> excuse me, not in the mainstream. Maybe, you know, selling directly from China or something like that. Um, and are possibly not providing the full full information, full data. But I think most of the bigger companies now, the mainstream companies, you know, any company that's basically getting reviews and open to reviews and open to feedback. Um, you can't hide so, it. You, you no, can't hide no, right? Once you can't. One of us will make a video. <laughs> yeah, this is it. This is it. So, you know, I used to sort of um, reveal um, the true performance of lights previously where they were exaggerated on their websites or at least not the full information was provided mm -hmm. but any of the lights that i get in now are pretty close to the if not spot on to the to the manufacturer's specifications and really all i'm doing on the channel is verifying it and giving a, a broad opinion on the light and sort of rubber stamping what they're valuable. saying valuable that's not yeah. just that's very valuable very valuable because yeah. i can't Huge. do that as a, an average customer or i i can't i can't take three lights out of the family budget worth of money and say okay i'm gonna grab i'm gonna see how this is gonna work and buy a so, 500 hundred dollar par meter plus right and go and like yeah that's that's the big difference well in terms of of the numbers that's there so looking at when you're purchasing it what about built now Quantum boards have been hot for a lot of people, and I know a lot mm -hmm. of people still use them. I've got quantum boards in my veg, but I have bars over here, like bars all day. But is are they better? And I know the 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 reach there, but like the cost between the two is like, damn, I could get more of these and plant them around and, and cover the canopy compared to one of these that's going to cost me more. Yeah, and <clears throat> this what it gets into your specific grow area and what your overall plan is, because if you're if you're like a small grower, you're just doing a two by two or a four by two or whatever, or three by three, and that's it. You're, you're going to stick at that. It's just for your own usage, that kind of thing. I'd say a bar light is probably the best thing to do. Um, it, 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 its downside is it's, it's rigid in its form, so it'll only ever really suit that particular sized area. Um, but the upside is you get really good light distribution. Um, the, the form that it's in... It has lots of surface area to cool from the LEDs. Um, airflow can pass up through it, um, which helps with the ventilation of your space and healthier plants. Um, and in terms of the quality, yes, the build quality does vary between fixtures. And, and I get some, like I reject quite a lot of lights. Um, I reject a lot of them visually, just people emailing me, asking me to review them, and I'll have a look and say, look, um, I'm not interested, basically. It's 2008. You can just tell and then and then i get fixtures in and i've had a few of them where i've just had to say to them look i can't uh, i can't review this product I, i'd just be um just be rubbishing it so but but most again most of the mainstream manufacturers so i see lights from companies like bestva viper spectra mars hydro those sort of guys and their quality, build quality is excellent you know and it's it's it what the the, the um they've developed so far in the last two or three years it's 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 incredible really and that's good um, to hear that's reassuring as a customer to know this yes um, i'm curious yeah. so I've, I've heard before and i'm not going to say this correctly because i can't remember what it is people have mentioned when it comes to leds that there's like the diodes uh the bin one or bin two or bin a, bin, a b, bin, b, bin, top bin, bin versus mid bin, bin. bottom the rumor bin. is that everyone Shit. shops from the same source and that yeah. they just pick and choose samsung. all yeah. from china and they're like i want my samsung 301bs i want the, like all the same uh you know mean wheel drivers like it's, it's almost like they go to the same source and just put their brand on it is that true is there it some is not, you know? <clears throat> it is entirely true yeah so wow. there's a small number of large manufacturers of LEDs. Um, LEDs, it's a bit like uh, making microprocessors. You know, they, they have to build this whole infrastructure to build these tiny little diodes and to manufacture millions of them at a time. And there's big investments in them. And so they, 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 the early or the, the, the new models are, are quite expensive, but within sort of 18 months, they've then become your sort of regular um, commercially priced LEDs available to everyone. 
So this top bin, sort of new LED stuff that comes out, there's the, the, the diode technology that's used in all of them is very similar. So the structure of the LED, uh, this is like, you know, sort of in manufacturing terms, the, the wafers that they use, the materials that they use are very similar. But what they can do is they can um, push them a little harder when they are a higher quality construction and they separate out the ones that they've made um, or at least they stream them into different bins and so there'll be some which are made which are more precisely made than others and they perform better and they'll last longer they're more efficient and those will be the top bins so they literally make you know they make 100 million leds and they they they, they separate them out into different bins um, however they charge a premium for the higher efficiency ones and therefore it's straight back to bang for book. You know, you spend a little bit more, you get a little bit more efficiency. Um, and that'll be of interest to some people who want to push the limits with efficiency or want to reduce their electricity costs as much as possible. But for most of us, the mid price stuff, perfectly good. And in fact, the, the Chinese LEDs, which again used to be substandard and unreliable up to two or three years ago, are now becoming uh, almost on a par with the, um, you know, the, the, the Samsungs, the Osrams and all of them, all of which, by the way, almost all of which are made in China anyway. Um, right. And factories yeah, that think, are all right alongside each other, you know. When I think of a lot of people get tripped up over the geography of things and it's like, I don't, it's more about the company or the people who are putting it together, I feel. And then getting it from the bin. Yes. Some people may have their opinion, like they're not making it all in America, but it says it's American made. It's like, well, they're sourcing parts of it and then yes they're manufacturing the rest of it where they say they are i mean there's proprietary things about how some of these companies go about it like even when you're dealing with heat sink and you're dealing with the way that the bars are distributed you're dealing with accessories you can add to it uh, there's a lot of companies who are doing different things the foldable lights like there's things that i think make them proprietary once they leave those bins but the person who's sitting there ready to buy it's like well what makes it better i think the biggest argument like you said a few times is well think about your garden Think about the flexibility. Think about where do you envision your garden in five years? Is this going to be the same exact space? Are you going to add to it? Like I always go into it thinking I'm going to double and, you know, shooting further, 10xing it and realistically getting maybe 25% larger. And at that point, I'd rather have that extra space knowing that I have flexibility in comparison to going into it with limitations that I've already cram packed my space and I, I put myself in, in the corner. And I think when you're going to buy it, people look at the brand now. They're looking at... Sam, they got the Samsung 301 Beast. It's got the mean wheel driver. Like those are kind of like industry standard for the layman guys. Just like, all right, this is what it is. But now there's companies who are starting to manufacture, well, allegedly manufacture their own different ones that aren't Samsung. And so some people are like, oh, they're not as good. And it's like, well, what makes you think that? Just because everyone else uses Samsung? I don't know. Like, is there anything to the different quality diodes that someone should pay attention to? Like they have to have this one. No, it's a Samsung do have high efficiency white LEDs. So they're they're um, right up there at the top table um, in terms of LEDs. It's just that they kind of got associated with, with grow lighting. I don't think when, when any of us go in and buy a bulb in you know for our home or domestic use or you know, a lighting lights for camera work or any of those sort of things, we ask what LEDs in them, we're not that bothered. As long as the thing does what it's supposed to do. Um it's totally but Sam yeah, but Samsung are, have have been at that top tier in terms of efficacy for probably three or four years. But I use Soul LEDs now, those Soul semiconductors. And those are, and I, yeah. I I just use them because of availability. There's so many people fighting over availability of of um, Samsung LEDs that I was being left short. I wasn't able to get them. as problems with supply, and um, my supplier just said, "Look, try these." You go to the data sheet; they're the same numbers as the Sam the mid bin uh, Samsung LEDs um, the same price not any cheaper they're just available uh, and always available so to me it was that that's the rationale I made my choice on and I don't know whether it affects my sales certainly sales have been good have been great I'm, I'm, I'm uh, selling too not too much but you know I'm selling out quite regularly so it's, it hasn't held me back in any way um, but I know but last year for example I would have had it could have been out for a couple of months with nothing to sell if um, right. if I was if I was sticking to um, Samsung only. Um, I think it will change over time. I think 
it was part of that sort of nervousness about the early products that were coming out that um as somebody said it to me recently actually it's a bit like a band you know if you're a great band you release a new song everybody's going to listen to it intensely and they're going to want to listen to it because it's from a great band if you're not a well-known band you know people will do cover versions and they'll you know they'll use something else to get to get attention it's a bit like that with leds if your product isn't that well known you're using the core of meanwhile and samsung to sort of give it legitimacy and um help people to trust what you're providing but um yeah i think i think that will ease over time and already i can see like uh, Mars Hydro is a good example <clears throat> where their their more budget fixtures are using basically no name LEDs. They don't name the, the, the suppliers of the LEDs or the manufacturers. So they're using stuff which is in in house or Chinese brands that we don't recognize. The lights perform just as well. Makes total sense. I was going to say, yeah, the the, the, the quality <clears throat> seems to be there with Mars Hydro. And I know I talked about earlier, I mentioned that they were selling lights in 2019 that they put out in 2014. But um, since then, they've they've definitely, they're one of those budget-friendly uh, companies that actually have pretty good quality in these yeah. days. Yeah. And I was going to ask you, um, you know, everyone's talking about, uh, you know, Samsung LEDs, Samsung LEDs. Um, you know, LM301H is supposedly, correct me if I'm wrong, the highest efficiency diode on the market today. Yeah. Um, are there any other diodes beyond Samsung that we can look for? I know you mentioned your, the sole diodes, but are there any other ones? I know Cree, Osram, but uh, it seems like there's a lot of folks that are, are just gung-ho on Samsung, and I feel like there's more diodes out there that are quality that you can get away with using and um, that are up there with. Samsung. Yeah, there's um well chips that I've used in the past, so Luminous, Soul, Semiconductors, Osram, Philips, um yeah, all all those big brands, you know, they've all got the same sort of levels of quality control and warranties and all that kind of stuff that you know, they've built their reputation as companies over a long, long, long time. And uh you know, it's 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 not like any of these companies, as I said, have any really different technology than than underneath you know in terms of the diodes and the wafers and the little gold wires and the phosphorus coating and um, it's just much more about quality control and um good good quality manufacturing and we're in this sort of maturing phase now and i've really noticed it this year that um you know the the early days of leds it was a bit like the wild west and there's lots of different companies all over the place doing lots of different things and lots of innovation going on and prices were high and lots of buzz around it and then as it matures and particularly with the led bars bar style lights is a good example you know you're you're you're, you're everybody's making a 650 watt bar light for a 5x5 five five. you know there's just so many to choose from they're all very similar form so they all look very similar functionally they're very similar they've got dimming they've got connectivity they've all that stuff and the, the difficulty for us as manufacturers when it comes to that is people go well how am I, what, how am I going to decide between these guys when they're all so similar and, and what happens is it goes to price and um, so there's a lot of big companies out there that are getting really aggressive um, on price this year particularly so I just did a, a review from Floriflex you know, the big hort horticulture company and um they brought out an led fixture this year for 650 660 watt dollar 660 watt fixture for 650 dollars so less than a dollar a watt from an american company and um you know of course the lights made in china they don't they don't pretend anything else um and they don't say it's the best light ever they just say here you go um we know it's going to sell because the price point that we put it at and it forces everybody else to get efficient, to get streamlined, to um, you know, to get their prices down to match. It's it's um, it's great for customers. It's great for growers. Uh, I think the next year or two we'll probably see a lot of smaller companies failing, unfortunately. I think, and 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 the the larger companies mopping up that business, um, a bit like you'd see in any other sort of maturing industry over time.
Well, you see the the expansion of so many of these companies having comparable style lighting, and before there'd be you know a handful that had bars, and that was kind of what made them proprietary. Like, well, they have the bar style lighting, and now I mean, you see with the FC series with Mars, um, Spider Farmer has bars. Everybody you can think of, I, I can't think of many companies who don't, and the ones who don't are having other things that are slightly somewhat proprietary. Like, um, Kind Tick. has a, a different looking light. It was very unique even uh, ac infinity shout out to our sponsor ac infinity they have a different their light they haven't put a whole lot of information about it but i gotta believe it's going to be integrated into their controller in some sense it's got to be very they've smart, been in touch so. with me actually they're gonna they're gonna send me a fixture pretty soon i think well Fantastic. i'm excited to see well, we that yes. first and i think awesome. the the competitiveness of the industry is obvious when a lot of these led companies are doing far more than just leds you know, you've got tents, you've got air units or air circulators, you've got modulars, you've got all, all everything. They've got their labels on just about everything. Full so growth. It Look at Green to, Sunshine Company. Right. Everything Spe- speaks to the, yeah. It speaks to the aggressiveness and the competitiveness of the industry. Now, I kind of I kind of wanted to pivot a little bit because bro science is something that I specialized in. I have a degree. Uh, as graduated in 2011. An uh, expert protoculturist. Uh, we we kind of had this conversation loosely on a live stream between the three of us. We were discussing spectrums, and uh, Chris gave us a wonderful explanation. But we just yeah, didn't and you called him. it bro science. Yeah, we didn't like, believe it. I just clicked science. the thing. I clicked the button. Jeez. I brought the bro science overlay. <laughs> um, we we were having a conversation in regards to full spectrum lights and whether or not a full spectrum light is as competitive as either a veg specific spectrum light or a flower specific spectrum light would a full spectrum take away or give more or is there is there a desire to have <clears throat> that all all in one so pretty much all led lights are full spectrum I, I have not tested a light in the last four or five years that isn't suitable for going all the way through from from veg to flower the if you think about it as a recipe there is Blue, green, and red are the main constituents in terms of power. And then we've got UV and far red on either end. Um, UV, or at least UVA, is basically acts the same as blue. So if you take the two of them together, your blue has a, has a big impact on plant development. It affects basically what's called cell expansion, which is the size of the cells in the plant. And what that results in is um, longer stalks, uh, longer internodal distances, longer branches, and basically stretched plants, if you don't have enough of it. And studies show that once you have a minimum of about five or six percent blue, um, you'll regulate that cell expansion to a point where it'll be suitable again for um, for growing all the way from from um, veg to flower. HPS only has about three percent blue, and that's why. We used to have, you know, the metal halide HPS combination. We'd use the metal halide with about 23% blue. That would keep our plants nice and short and dense during the veg stage. And we also didn't need as much horsepower, didn't need as much light intensity in those early stages for the younger plants. Um, and almost all the LEDs that um, I look at now would be what's called mid-color temperature. So they'd be a sort of a warm white up to a, a cool white about 3000 K up to about 5000 K color temperature and sometimes a mix of the two. And the blue, can st- the, the, in, in those color temperatures, the blue um, proportion or percentage would be about 12 or 15% blue, more than enough blue in there to regulate plant growth. After that, you've got green in the middle. Green is like what I call a filler color. It um, It is useful in the sense in, and having it as part of the mix in that Green, like green photons, they do bounce off the leaves, um, but they bounce around the place and, and they also penetrate the leaves deeper. So they're quite useful in a canopy situation because they'll, they'll get down a little bit further than the other, um, other spectrum. Red then is fairly neutral, but it's high, slightly higher efficiency in terms of um, uh, photosynthetic efficiency. So we want as much red in that mix as possible. Um, and <clears throat> that's that's why it, well, there's two, a combination of two factors. We, we add in those red LEDs because they're more efficient horticulturally, or sort of photosynthetically, but they're also more efficient electrically. However, the downside is they're also more expensive electrically. So 
they're added into the lights a bit like um, sort of a turbo booster where they'll within that mix of the um, light spectrum they'll give it its sort of an extra boost electrically so more power output per watt and also a little boost photosynthetically they don't affect flowering in that sense they don't and this is sort of a residual from the blurple lights where they used to say you know you had blue for veg and, and red for flowering that wasn't to do with plant development or the shape of the plant or how it would flower or when it was flower it's purely about energy terms about light intensity terms you know that you you're bulking the plant in the flowering stage and you want as much power intensity as possible and people associated that with red but uh, it's not it's not um it doesn't affect plant development basically there's then a discussion or argument around far red um far red has the opposite effect to blue in that you, if you, you if you have a little bit of it's okay you have too much of it it'll actually promote that cell expansion again so <clears throat> most leds will have a little bit if you see in the spectrum there's this little trailing bit at the end going into far red going beyond the power range so most white leds will output about three four percent far red which is perfectly fine I'm not sure whether it's sensible really to be adding in extra far red LEDs. They're not as photosynthetically efficient as far red, so you're not going to get the same growth per watt of used or per dollar for buying them and, and installing them. Um, there's a little bit of people believing that far red is going to do some sort of something else to so sort of add something extra in terms of flaring, but you know, your Bro plants science. are going to. I yeah, know, it's pro science. Some, it's I found it. Yeah. Yeah. So well, they, what about they, the Emerson effect? Right? Doesn't that have to do with it with the IR? Emerson effect. Combined? Emerson effect is about all spectrum. So if you got a, if you just um, got red LEDs and grew a plant with red LEDs, you would get a certain amount of growth. If you used, if you put the same power intensity down but mixed it with green and red, you would get slightly more growth. Okay. And, and, and 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 it's 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 uh, again it's been misinterpreted um as you know you get some sort of multiplier effect where if i add in some far red it 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 it, it, it makes the other photons more absorbed or it takes eight photons to generate one unit of photosynthesis and the plant does not care if it's a blue one a green one or a red one so growth as in Yields, as in mass of the plant, is related to how much light you're putting down. Plant development, so the shape of the plant, is about what spectrum you use. But if you're in the white zone, so you're using a mixture of all those three, you're getting the Emerson effect straight away because you've, you've mixed all those spectrum. And you're getting a, um, a, a good plant development, which is um, balanced you know it's going to grow short and dense it's going to be healthy most importantly i think in in terms of the, the white the recent development is that you get a nice clean white light where you can see everything that's going on mm -hmm. I, um, love that. I love that so, technology absolutely okay so it's fair to say yeah. chris you told us so okay that's fine that's fine uh, you can say it you <laughs> yeah, can say it. Light, you knew it i mean the you're blue right light, it, uh, it's definitely that's one thing you want to look at right is uh, it, actually just to talk sorry, about that sorry. real quick go ahead. i've heard it's 15 to 20 percent blue light is kind of ideal shane just mentioned that it's 12 to 15 percent mm -hmm. oh well no anything above five percent will um will sort of trigger shorter cell expansion so okay if you once you've got a minimum of five now five percent is a very warm white um it's just a slightly bit cooler than hps so HPS is about 3% blue. So 5% is just that lower limit. Um, but anywhere really from sort of 7 or 8% up um, is good. You could argue that when you get over 12 or 15%, you're kind of using too much because you're, you're, you're putting out blue photons instead of red ones at that point. And red ones are a little bit more photosynthetically efficient. So if you want to really dial it in, um, you'd maximize the red you'd have some green in the middle just to keep it white so you can see what's going on and you'd have in and around 10 percent blue but but you know t t if i adjusted from 10 percent blue to 15 percent red and the red sorry 10 percent from 10 percent blue to 15 percent blue and the red goes down proportionately the impact of my yield is going to be minuscule Minus like it's 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 going to be so, a okay, percent so or two it's 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 not really 
you, d d d again, there's no there's no magic in the spectrum. You know, there's no um, if you use these photons, you get a multiplier effect. No, it's you count them out. It's eight photons equals one unit of photosynthesis, which is one molecule of glucose, which is one unit of growth. You know, it's 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 chemistry and physics, and there is not any m magical sort of uh, Bro science mu you multiplier yeah. effect that you can have. Yeah, there's no yeah fairy dust you can, can sprinkle on it. And bros yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say one thing I think worth mentioning. I know there's still going to be some viewers here that are going to go and they're going to start trying to look to see what the percentage of blue is on their fixture. Now, unfortunately, I, I feel like 99% of companies don't advertise that, right? The only way you can look at that is if you get an integrated sphere report um, and then you're able to see the percentage of, of that. So you might have to actually reach out to your manufacturer, request that report from them in order to see where they're at. Um, and some companies aren't really open about that at all, I feel like. What I would say is if you go to my instagram i'm first of all i'm putting out a video very shortly on spectrum which is kind of debunking a lot of this stuff and just and where is that saying, awesome Go ahead, uh, it's coming plan? out and you, it's coming out on youtube in the next week or two but i have a few instagram posts that deal with this and they show graphs of the blue green and red proportion of lots of different typical grow lights and um, so i'll give you a really good example back in purple times and um, people had blue LEDs and red LEDs, and that's all they had, and they used so they use them. And there's companies like Viper Spectra, and, and and that used to use just a little bit more blue than other people. So these used, used to use about 20% blue, which is right around the same as metal halide was. And I still talk to people who love their blurple lights for doing their seedlings and their young clones. And that's really because it's got that 20% blue, and it's giving it that. First of all, the blue does add a little. It makes plants a little greener too. <laughs> it actually makes them um, appear a little bit greener too. So it's not just the growth, but they'll look healthier and they'll look a bit more um, green and vibrant when grown under a little bit more blue. And also just the mere fact that you're shining blue light on them makes them look a bit greener, a bit richer, a bit darker. Yeah, to the eye. Even. Um, yeah, just, just <clears throat> you know, we all fool ourselves with lots of these sort of visual effects all the time. and. Um, so there's there's a, a, there's validity in saying that you know for for example for young plants that using a higher color temperature so five or six k light LED wise it's got 20 25 percent blue for a specific application um, makes sense but when you want one light for your grow the whole way through it's um, you know you, you just want something that's right in the middle of the road is going to have that balance of blue and red where it's as efficient as it can be for um, uh, you know power and, and uh, yield purposes and has enough blue that it will be suitable from first stages all the way through so full spectrum will do you fine from beginning to end and that's that's whether it's cnh uh, whether it's a blurple light whether it's got white with reds in it or white with high color temperature or low color temperature or it's got little uv led uva leds just they needs all eight photons will work perfectly one unit of photosynthesis i think that's yeah. what i picked so, up out of this entire thing well i'm yeah, glad you brought up uv a lot of people are, are stuck on that now where there's some lights that are being implemented with uvb where they have this and i'm like hmm. uvb oh. i heard quite a bit about that yeah I, I sell a uvb light myself so i i i it's the one area where there's a slightly different thing going on, and it's not about mass, it's not about growth. It's about stimulating basically oil production. So it's much more about terpenes and flavonoids. Um, and in fact, UVB, if you use it at early stages of growth, will, will, re will reduce your growth rate. Um, it basically will, will um, it'll, uh, basically tell the plant or message the plant to start creating oils and to protect itself and so instead of just growing as fast as it can it'll be going into sort of protection so you don't want to use it um, through um, veg and even the first halfway through flower when the plant is really bulking it's only really to be used the last two three weeks of flower and you use it very sparingly you'll only apply it for maybe an hour or two a day mm. um, and you're trying to stimulate that response without basically damaging the plant. UVB will damage the plant, you know? 
So it's it's like a and, and what, what you get from yeah, basically, and what you get from it is you get um, higher terpenes. So it's varied. Um, uh, since I started producing the lights and researching it about two years ago, I've talked to a lot of manufacturers, um, or sorry, growers, um, industrial growers, who are using it um, not just uh, for cannabis, but also for um, herbs. Um, so, you know, growing rosemary in greenhouses, for example, you know, they're not getting the UV through the glass. So they're using um, UVB to get that stickier, um, more potent smell from the rosemary, like as if you were growing outdoors. So how long and, before we see a switch on our lights that's going to allow us to activate UVB? Ooh. Well, the difficulty is UVB is not really feasible in, in LED terms. So I did a lot of research on this again, and there are UVB LEDs. They're extremely expensive and very low efficacy and very low lifespan. So they're not practical for growers. Um, you have to use basically fluorescence um, or some sort of, sort of basically plasma, which is basically high voltage through a mercury uh, uh, gas, uh, generating a, a gas from mercury. So the ones I sell now are, and, and California Lightworks and Agromax and a few others sell the same ones. It's, it's a fluorescent tube where it's pretty much similar to a standard fluorescent tube. Instead, it has much less phosphorus, phosphorus on the coating on the inside. And uh, it has a glass which will allow the UVB to pass. Um, it generates a little bit of light as well. But um, it'll, same, by the way, as reptile bulbs as well and tanning bulbs. They're all the same technology. It's just um, uh, a standard fluorescent. It's got mercury in it. In it. It's, it's, it's fired up with electricity to make a plasma. That plasma emits photons down this low UVB range. And if you put loads of phosphorus coating on the inside of the bulb, a lot of that those photons will um, basically be sort of diffracted into other spectrum of light and you get a broad spectrum of light. And what we do is we use less phosphorus coating on the inside. So they glow very dull, but the glass and the phosphorus allows the UVB photons to pass. But they're the only real viable solution of delivering um, UVB to um, for a grower. But they work, they're like a 20 watt fixture for like seventy dollars we'll do a five by five and you know they're rated for five thousand hours and you're only using them for an hour God, i'm gonna have to buy one um, i don't even know every day for you know three weeks so you might be using them for 20 hours in a grow um so they're very cheap and the range of now there is a range some um some uh, strains just do not respond as well as others. So there's a range of, of um, response that you get depending on the, the plant uh, variety. Um, but you get anywhere from about 5% up to about 40% increase in terpenes. Damn. Damn. See, and that's where it, that low of, of investment to get that large of a, a return, man, that's... I see why a lot of people are leaning towards using that more. It's just kind of about implementing it into a, a tent or a smaller space and how you're going to be able to put that in your room easily without a whole lot of work when you've got a full canopy. In my case, I've got, um, you know, plants are maybe four and a half, five weeks into flowering and they're in a, a trellis. So I can't really just like move things as easy as I'd like to. They're stuck where they're at. So it's like, well, you either have it ready and kick it on when it's there or you wait till the next grow, you yeah. know, That's for me at least. You know, another thing I wanted to, to touch on that I've had a lot of people ask me, and I never have a solid answer for them. I never do. But I just say, I noticed my plants need it too. LEDs and calcium deficiencies. What Good question. Is that? Good question. You know, and, and, and from here's this little bit of research that I've always given people, that basically the plant is working harder. And the um, like the free calcium, it's, it's ionized by the light, essentially. So it's not going to be as powerful for your plant in comparison if you were dealing with you know hps or lesser powerful lighting is that is there any science or is that all bro science sounded like yeah. good science yeah i i don't honestly know I'm, I'm certainly not an expert in terms of nutrient deficiencies and nutrients overall i have um i used to get a lot more questions about it um in particular people switching over i don't get as much questions about it anymore i don't i don't exactly understand why um now that you mention it but 
Everybody yeah, just I, pours I, CalMag I, on everything as a fix. Well, just, yeah, you <laughs> nailed it. See, that's and I'm curious if this had a, has a lot to do with the evolution of LEDs and maybe the evolution of uh, fertilizer along with cannabis. I, is it? Yeah, I, maybe it's possible that these nutrient companies have taken into consideration that 95 percent of their base is using LED and have made some kind of an adjustment? Maybe this is a nutrient question, perhaps? Ah, ah. Yeah, I, I, I'm not quite sure. It's unlikely it's going to be because of a significant increase in um, in light output. Um, yeah, I don't. I honestly don't know. That's when we need to find the scientist who knows we'll this. That one, I've, I've never really found out why. I've looked it up. There's forums. There's hearsay. Mm -hmm. um, but I've seen my plants do it. Or I'm like, how in the hell? And especially I'm, I'm growing in cocoa. So I, I'll cut the calcium at a certain point. I don't need to add that in, but I'll still add some magnesium. And I, I still start seeing deficiencies. I'm like, how is this happening right now? All right. 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 Like, well, it's, it, it's, it's clear we're definitely... Like, what a, this is incredible conversation, Shane. Like, it's clear we're probably going to have a 2.0 on this one. We may like have we can, to have you come back. A better can, time for you that'll work, so you don't get interrupt the family flow or any of that stuff. Right. We we have so there's so much to unbox, man. But like you have explained so much to me that have, has allowed me to think. Okay, okay, uh, Chris is right. Damn it again. <laughs> um, which is which is okay. That's okay. You know, I'm not upset about that, Shane. Uh, real quick, what's what's your Instagram? What's your YouTube? Where can we find you if we have any questions? Go yeah, so um, YouTube is Migro, M-I-G-R-O. Um, Instagram is Migro Light. And yeah, that's about it, really. There's a, a website, uh, MigroLight.com. Perfect. And we'll put and, those <clears throat> links in the description. Yeah, yeah. so I, I, we publish um, uh, Grow Light reviews every week. Um, pretty much every main, well, the majority of the, the large manufacturers now have their have been tested and reviewed in the last 12 months or so, so you get right up-to-date information. Um, blogs on the website on, you know, how to, on, on basic LED tech, how to understand it, what, what grow light to buy, how big a light you need, all that stuff. Much and Instagram, same thing with reviews. And we try to put out a little bit of science stuff as well. It's kind of light, but a lot of it is visual, using graphs and spectrum charts and that sort of stuff. But Got a fairly good database of um, a lot of the things we're going to discuss now this evening will be covered on um, the Instagram and the YouTube channel. That's awesome. Shane, well, nice. uh, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to speak with us. To, uh, I've taken a lot away from this conversation. Dude, it's absolutely. been a pleasure, and uh, yeah, I'll be back anytime. Fantastic. Yeah, dude. I'd love to see it uh, even more in depth with the more technical guy we have here. Maybe a garden talk, uh, Mr. Grow It. That would be a cool. I'd love to see that one. I'd love to yeah, see that I'll one. Have to talk about that after we end the podcast, maybe. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, with that being said, boys, it's your boy Rob from COTV, Mr. Grow It, Pigeons, and Shane from Micro. It's awesome to have you here, man. Appreciate it. Until next Thank time, you. Yeah. Peace. Peace.